the Lord. This is Bishop Moore again with the uh, Full Gospel Evangelistic Ministries, Yeshua Ministry. We're happy, amen, to come back to you again, amen, for the cause of the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ and fulfilling the Lord's commission where he said in Matthew 28 and 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And so that's what we focus on, on the commandments of Christ and on the teachings of Christ, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're so happy for those of you that are tuning in to this uh, channel. Uh, we appreciate your likes. We appreciate uh, the views. We want, you to we want to encourage you to continue that and encourage somebody else and tell somebody else about it. We're not looking for popularity. We're looking to spread the word of God and to help in these last and evil days. All right, this morning, let's go, amen, to the word of Christ, amen, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew the seventh chapter and I'm going to read this before we get off into what we want to talk about on this morning but this is all a part of the Word of God is all a part of the teachings of Jesus Christ the commandments of Christ Matthew the seventh chapter starting at the 13th verse Jesus said enter ye in at the straight gate for broad is the way what is it wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. Jesus said, verse 18, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, verse 20, By the fruits ye shall know them. Verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And I want to stop right there. I encourage you as we uh, do in this uh, broadcast, amen. Go back and read the whole chapter and read all and read the com continuation of the chapter. We don't have time to go through it all. But we want to focus in this morning. We want to focus in on what Christ said in verse 15. Amen. Verse 15. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening or, or, or extremely hungry, that would rav ravenous mean, ravening wolves. We want to talk this morning, we want to talk today about Jesus speaks concerning false prophets. Jesus speaks concerning false prophets, and I know I'm not going to finish today, amen, so I want to encourage you to listen to the next uh, broadcast, amen. We and get a, get a further and a more thorough understanding of what we're talking about. Jesus speaks concerning false prophets. He said, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. He said, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to them, giving them a warning, giving them a, a warning to be on guard to be watchful of false prophets. Beware of false prophets which come to you, he said, in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They come looking like sheep. They are hypocritical. They come in sheep's clothing, but he said, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And we have this taking place today. Uh, the Lord also said in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, he said, many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They're going to come saying, I'm of Christ, saying, I believe in Christ. 
And Jesus said that they would uh, deceive many, beware of false prophets. Jesus speaks concerning false prophets. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at this, and we're just going to break the ice a little bit today. There are some she-wolves. Wolves are, 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 are carnivorous, carnivorous animals. They eat meat. And there are she-wolves and he-wolves. It's not just he-wolves. We tend, I, I believe, to many times just think of the he-wolves. But there are some she-wolves. And there are some he-wolves. Wolves, wolves uh, they, they run in packs. And there's an alpha and female wolf. Those are the ones that dominate over the entire pack. Those are the ones that mate. Those are the ones that eat the, eat furs at kills. There are she-wolves and he-wolves, and they dominate over the pack. They dominate over the pack. Now, the difference between, what is the difference between a, a, a wolf pack and a sheepfold? They are, they are synonymous in their social habits. Uh, wolves run in packs. Anytime you see one wolf, you may see a lone wolf, but trust me, he's associated and united with a pack of wolves. And sheep run in flocks or in a sheepfold. So they have similar social habits. That's why the wolf that's in sheep clothing can come in a flock of sheep uh, and dwell because they have similar social habits. Wolves know the patterns of or the lifestyles of the sheep. Uh, uh, but wolves produce wolves. And sheep produce sheep. Now, let me say this. All wolves don't have to be in the pulpit. Remember I said they run in packs. So you may have a wolf in the pulpit, but trust me, in the pews, or somewhere around in the vicinity, or somewhere around is his pack. They all may appear to be sheep. Jesus said they come in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. They attack, they hunt in packs. So you have to be aware of the wolves. Uh, I thought about what Paul said in the book of Galatians when he was talking to the church of Galatia. He said, uh, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you don't be consumed one of another. Sheep don't eat meat. Sheep are herbivores. They eat vegetables and fruits and grass. Wolves are carnivorous, carnivores. They eat meat. And what is the sheep in the sheep pack for, or in the sheep fold rather for? He's in there to find something to eat. He's in there to devour. He's in there to, to consume. And Paul told the church of Galatia uh, to be, if you don't walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit, uh, uh, lest you bite and devour one another. Now let's say this. I want to say this right here, and it's very important, and I know that many of you can identify with it. Sometimes, and I want to say this, thank God there is true prophets. And there are false prophets. There cannot be false prophets unless there are true prophets. There are good churches and there are bad churches and Satan comes to all of them you may go to a good church and find somebody that mistreats you don't don't just leave the church because one or two people mistreat you that could be a wolf that's in there among the sheep that's seeking like Jesus said about the devil in in first Peter I believe uh, seeking whom he may devour to discourage you from coming back to the house of God but now if you're if the shepherd is a wolf then I got I got news for you on that we'll talk about that later on if the shepherd is a wolf then it's time to get out of that sheepfold but if you just got a wolf in the in, in, in the pews we call them pew pastors and I wouldn't say leave because of that wolves breed wolves sheep breed sheep ravenous means they're ready to consume naturally now naturally naturally a sheep cannot turn into a wolf nor can a wolf turn into a sheep but spiritually spiritually a sheep can be turned into a wolf that's why paul said in the book of uh, first in, in the book of corinthians he said good evil communication corrupt 
good manners. That's what he said. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So if a sheep spiritually runs with wolves, he'll learn. He'll learn the habits of wolves. Even if you're saved, Jesus talked about the Pharisees. I believe in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, he said they can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when they make that one proselyte, that one convert, Jesus said, you make him more, I think he said maybe twofold more the child of hell than you are yourself. So many times, and I've seen this, people get saved and come into what they think is a church, and they end up getting worse. You got to identify if you are in a wolf pack or if you're in a sheepfold. You might be in something that looks like a sheepfold, but it's just full of wolves. People are devouring one another. People's uh, uh, inspiration is killed. I always say, uh, 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 when you come to church, you should leave better, feeling better than when you left. If you come into church and you're feeling worse when you leave than you came, then you may, you may need to examine that. You might be in a wolf pack and not a sheepfold. So you need to understand, Jesus said, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, he said, they are ravening wolves. Now, if you're going to look at the wolf, then we need to look at the sheep as well. In the flock of sheep, sheep's habits are different. Their characteristics are different from that of a wolf. Now, there are alpha sheep. There is a such thing as an alpha sheep. Now the wolves, wolves will dominate. The wolves will consume. The wolves will over, overcharge and consume, uh, 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 devour a person, not only naturally, but their spirit, their, their integrity, their, their initiative. Don't feel like doing nothing. It'll kill even their drive. But in a flock of sheep, there is what we call an alpha sheep. Now that alpha sheep doesn't dominate like the alpha wolf, wolf do. The alpha sheep is, is one that many times, watch this, the alpha sheep is, is another name for the alpha sheep is a black sheep. You heard the term, the black sheep of the family or the black sheep. Well, many times the alpha sheep is just a black sheep. Now a black sheep don't dominate. The nature of a black sheep is not domination. It don't dominate other sheep, but it's just the nature of a black sheep is that it, 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 it follows its own course. It may not do things the way others do. A black sheep, they say, is a trendsetter. The black sheep is one who don't follow the norms. You know, you heard of the ugly duckling, the black, uh, uh, they show the black duck that's different from the rest of them. He's a, he's a duck, or he's a sheep, but they don't follow the same, they're, 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 they're different in their pattern of doing things. Not that they're wrong, but they just don't see things the same. That's an alpha sheep. Sometimes we see people that are alpha sheep, and we call them black sheep because many times, let's just face it, in the church world, we're afraid of those things that are different. Anything that's different, we, we shy away from like we know everything. God, the Bible says, as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are God's ways and our ways, and his thoughts and our thoughts. And then the Bible says we are the body of Christ and members in particular. So no one person, even the Bible said we know in part and we prophesy in part. You only see so much. Nobody sees it all. Nobody knows it all. Those black sheep or those alpha sheep, when they come in, we have to be careful that we don't designate them as being troublemakers. Because the difference in an alpha sheep and a wolf clothing sheep clothing is that even an alpha sheep will abide by and follow the commandments of Christ. Every sheep, whether an alpha sheep or just a regular sheep, a member or a lay member, or a minister, if he is a, a part or she is a part of the body of Christ, if they are sheep in truth, they're going to follow the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Now, a wolf, as I said, will dominate. The alpha sheep don't dominate. It just goes in a different path. Uh, why don't it dominate? Because Jesus gave the commandment to his disciples. 
In the book of Matthew, the 20th chapter, and the 20, I think the 20, uh, 25th verse, Jesus talks to his disciples. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Verse 26, Jesus tells us, the disciples, but it shall not be so among you. The Lord never called us to dominate anybody. Paul said not that, in the book of Corinthians, not that we have dominion over your faith, but we're helpers of your joy. And then he says in the book of 1 Peter again, uh, not being lords over God's heritage, but the wolf will seek to dominate the sheep don't seek to dominate. It leaves and it leaves, and then the, the regular sheep will follow, and the alpha sheep will still stay within the perimeters of the doctrine of Christ. Are you listening to me? An alpha sheep is labeled a black sheep. Uh, uh, not because it does anything wrong, but simply because of its nature is not to follow the natural norms. Now the question. The question that we have to ask wolves in sheep clothing or to identify, how do I identify, how do I identify a false prophet? How do I identify a false prophet? Well, Jesus said, ye shall know them by the fruits. Now, when he said, ye shall know them by the fruits, many times we think about, okay, well, is somebody getting saved? Is the Spirit of God in the church? Is the church growing? God healing? Miracles taking place? That's not the fruit Jesus is talking about. When he says how you identify a false prophet is by his fruit, a tree is known by a fruited bear, he's not talking about those kind of fruits. And I'm going to show it to you in the word of God. Why? Because those things, people getting saved, people getting healed, deliverance, miracles, those are not the works of the minister. Those are the works of God. The Bible said, and the Lord added daily to the church, such as should be saved. Jesus said, I believe it was in maybe St. John 6 and 44, he said, no man can come to me except the Father draw him. And then the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the Lord walked in the midst of all the seven golden candlesticks, which were the seven churches of Asia. God's presence will be there. Jesus gave a promise to his disciples, if two of you shall gather in my name, he promised he would be in the midst. So you may have a thousand people there. You could have a thousand wolves. And if you got two sheep that came there in Christ's name, the Lord will be in the midst. But that, the presence of the Lord does not validate the other 998 that are there for the wrong reason. So we have to understand. We have to understand what works he was talking about when he said, by the fruits ye shall know them. The question is this, the fruits, the personal fruits, look at that minister's life. Look at what he's doing, not just what he's preaching, but look at what he's doing, because he may be preaching like the Pharisees in, in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, Jesus said they were laden men with heavy burdens, grievous to be born, but he said they wouldn't lift them with one of their fingers. It's not enough for a minister to preach the word of God. You've got to look to see if he is following, if he's living according to the word of God. If he's doing the things that he's preaching about. He may be preaching the word, but is he living it? He may be preaching the doctrine of Christ and the commandments of Christ, but you've got to look to see, is he living it? These are the fruits that Jesus was talking about, and I'm going to show you that because he said many will come to me and many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in your name? That's works. That's fruit. Have not we cast out devils in your name? That's fruit. Have not we done many wonderful works in your name? That's fruit. But the Lord say, I'm going to tell them, I never knew you. So the fruit that he was talking about identifying the false prophet by is not what goes on in the church. The Lord said himself in, in, in the book of Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've preached the gospel on the streets and seen people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. I've seen people get filled with the Holy Ghost in school. I've seen people get saved just on the side of the road. And then I've seen people get saved in the church. 
So wherever a person calls out to the Lord, God will save that person, but that doesn't validate or confirm whatever it is. You recall in the days of Eli, when Samuel was a, was a little child, Eli had lost out with God because he did not do the will of God as far as correcting his sons. And God pronounced judgment on him and on his house. His son Hophni and Phinehas was laying with the women in the church and taking an unjust amount of the tithes, the food, the meat that came in. And he did not correct them sufficiently. And God had already pronounced judgment against him. Yet when the child Samuel laying in the temple heard the voice of God in the night call his name Samuel, he got up and ran to Eli and said, what is it you want, Eli? I put it in my own words. You call me. Eli said, no, I ain't call you. Go lay back down. So he went and laid back down again. And the Bible said the Lord called him again. And he got up and ran to Eli again. What is it you call me? Eli said, I call you not. But then the Bible said that Eli, who was a false prophet, who had lost out with God, he discerned that the Lord had called the child. He told Samuel, go lay back down. And if he call you again, say, speak, Lord, thy servant. Here are some men of God that know God, or have known God, rather, that have had a genuine experience with God. But somewhere along the line, like Paul said in 1 Timothy, they, they, they that seek to be rich will fall into temptation and a snare. They've got ensnared by the snares of the devil in some way lost out with God. Yet they know enough of God to tell you the truth. And Eli told Samuel, you go lay back down. And if he call you again, then say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. And Samuel went and laid back down. And when the Lord called him, Samuel followed Eli's instructions and said, Speak, Lord, thy servant here. And God spoke to him and even gave him a prophecy concerning Eli. So we need to look at the minister's life. Look at his works. Look at his fruits. That's what's going to identify whether or not he is a true prophet of God. Jesus said, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now many times we would, if you look at that from one standpoint, you might say, well, he still can do something good. But if he's corrupt, his fruit going to be corrupt. I don't care if it look good, it's going to be corrupt. God don't, there's no such thing as a partial follower of Christ. That minister that's a true minister of Jesus Christ is going to obey the commandments of Christ. How many of them? All of them. There's not going to be one he's going to overlook. There's not going to be one he's going to set to the side and not take heed to. Anytime you find a minister that can override the word of God or ignore one scripture, don't take that many, it just take one. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or two shall pass from the, from the law. Any minister that's up, that, that's, that, 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 that will tell you that you don't have to obey one of the commandments of Christ is a false prophet. Because if he tell you, you you can disobey one, pretty soon he's going to tell you you can disobey another. And the Bible says, a little leaven, leaven is a whole lump. Beware, Jesus said, of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. He said, but inwardly, inwardly, the false prophet is a hypocrite. He comes looking like a sheep. He knows the habits of the sheep. He knows how to blend in. He know how to speak in tongues. He know how to shout. But he said inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Look around. If sheep are disappearing, it may be because you got a wolf in there. And if you got one, there's a 99.9% .9 chance you got two. And if you got two, you may have a pack in there. They don't look like wolves. They're in sheep's clothing. Now, how do they get the sheep's clothing? They kill the sheep. That's the only way you get sheep clothing is that you have to kill the sheep. And he didn't just kill the sheep, he ate the sheep. How many times have we heard of people going to church and leaving church hurt? Many times they leave, leave and go home and sit down, they ain't going to church no more. All them people are hypocrites. No, baby, all of them not hypocrites. You may have just ran into a wolf 
in sheep's clothing. And that was the whole design to keep you out of the house of God. I like the way my pastor used to say it. If you let the hypocrite stand between you and God, he's closer to God than you are. If you let somebody keep you out of church because they're evil, then that means that they stand between you and God, which means they are closer to God than you are. Jesus said, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Every sheep, every sheep, the alpha sheep as well as the regular sheep must follow the shepherd. Every shepherd must be a sheep. We are, we are under shepherds. Jesus said, the scripture says in the book of 1 Peter, when Peter speaks to the church, he said, feed the flock of God, 1 Peter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filth and lucre, see, a wolf is looking for money, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in sample or an example to the flock. He said, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. See, the chief shepherd is Christ. Not the preacher, not the minister, not the apostle, not the bishop, not the pastor, not the evangelist. The chief shepherd is Jesus. We all are sheep. You may be an alpha sheep, but you're still a sheep. You still have to follow the shepherd. We are the body of Christ and members in particular. So let's make sure that we follow the shepherd, follow Christ. We must follow Christ. Paul said to the church in 1 Corinthians, I believe the 11th chapter and the first verse. He said, be ye followers of me, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Not just follow him, but follow me, even as I follow Christ. If a minister is following Christ, then you can follow that minister. Let me say that again. If a minister is following Christ, which means adhering to, obeying all of the commandments of Christ, then you can follow that minister, because by following him, you are simultaneously following Christ. But if a minister is not following Christ, then you need to stop following that person because that's not Christ's disciple. That's not a prophet of the Lord. That's a false prophet. Moses told the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy about the 13th chapter and the first verse. He said, if there arise among you a prophet, I believe he said, or a dream of dreams, and he give you a sign or, he, he, or, or, or wonder and it come to pass, and if he turn around and tell you not to follow God or not to follow the commandments of God, he said, don't follow that man because the Lord has not sent him. It all hinges on what the, what the commandments of God is. All hinges on the word of God. Not on how good he sounds. Not on how, 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 how good he shake, but is he obeying, is she obeying the commandments of Christ? All of them. Can't say, well, he obeyed part of them. No, then that, that means he's a partial, a partial follower of Christ. That means he's not a follower of Christ at all. Whom the Son set free, the Bible says he's free indeed. So we must follow Christ. Beware of false prophets. Jesus said, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. How are you going to know them? Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. I want you to listen to the next, next broadcast. We're going to go a little deeper into it. Let's follow Christ. He's the only way to eternal life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God bless you till we come your way again.